That is a stunning piece of wood. I would have never thought in a million years that that so would have ended up coming out. Don't even see it very well because the it's so shiny the uh, lights reflect off of it. But I took that bit. So this is the project, um, I'm calling it my prehistoric bowl as you can see from the title. The reason being is because um, it's old, chunky and rough around the edges just like me. So. So, yeah, so, um, yeah, nothing else to say really, it's failed, no good. <laughs> so, I'll see you guys next week, fresh new project, one that works, and take care, speak to you soon, and bye for now. afternoon all hope you're all well thanks for coming over and joining us and thank you so much to each and everyone who came over and joined the quiz i hope you had a good night it was absolutely hilarious and uh congratulations to uh wayne and huey who took it um took the points uh so it's two all now gold hunters and wood warriors two neck and neck so we'll see what happens next month um next one will be on the 24th of june uh be a link for that going up in next week or so so i'll get a link up for that um, so I hope to see you there. So anyway, today, as the title said, um, a lot of people worry about buying nice new, nice blanks and this, that and the other for for um, turning. So I've managed to grab a piece out of the fire pile. Um, it was about that big round, but I've split it with a splitter, uh, just roughly. And then we're going to see what we can get out of it. Um, the bark was a little bit loose on it, so I've just run some super glue down the back of the bark, so hopefully the bark will hold on. If it doesn't, not bothered, we'll rip it off and we'll see what we can get out of it. Um, so, like I said, we're just going to basically see what we can get out of a piece of old firewood. See what happens. If it's got some splits or cracks in it, then we'll see if we can get overcome it. But um, if worse come the worst, it's all about practice. You can use old manky pieces of wood to uh, practice on... And it'll be a fancy piece of wood to put on the fire exactly that be an expensive fire blank so let's go and have a look at it um put some lights on well there's a piece of silver birch now, i know it's silver birch because it's got silver bark on that is it? i know it's a piece of silver birch um there was a nasty crack down one side of it so what i did is i just put the splitter in the crack and opened the crack up and opened it up i've have planed a little bit off of it because it was really rough on this edge where it went through the center of the tree but as you can see we've got a couple of little cracks in there that hopefully we're going to turn away and, and then one coming through there but like i say hopefully uh, once we get some shape and we've gone into it we're going to turn that away because the cracks actually don't look like they're going very deep i ran some thin super glue down there first spray it with a bit of activator then put some medium over the top of it excuse me and then i did exactly the same with that just so it soaks into the bark and hardens the bark off a little bit really so I'm going to put a, a tenon on the end of this 
um, and then we're going to try and part it off by using our chuck um, as a chuck, a chuck, a chuck as a jam chuck. A um, bit similar to the video I put up last week, really. But I thought it'd be good for practice, if nothing else. So I'm going to get my smock on ready in this absolutely scorching workshop. And uh, get ready while Nick reads out the chat. Hello, everybody. Right, so had a bit of a hoo-ha. And again, as usual, I shut the page down. So I've lost all the beginning of the chat. But Steve said it was, was would Wizardry by Column was on first. So I'll give you a shout out first. And then... On my list in front of me, I have Barry Wood Turning by Barry, Pete from Twisted Trees, Brian at Heart with Turning, um, Terry TJ Turning, Dara Dara Coolum, um, Copper Owl Wood Turning, Michael McEwen, Chris Dodds, uh, Roy's the Boy. David J. Heath, Guildford Carpenter, Todd at Glencove Woodworks, Ruby Clare, Brent Beecroft, um, Terry Bartlett, Grandpa Jim the Woodturner, uh, Wouldn't It Be Nice, and that's all I've got on my list. So if I've missed anyone, just say, hey, Mrs., you missed me, and I'll. Um, Give you, oh, Brian with a Y, Joe Senior, hi Joe, Roger Kent, um, Rex B, uh, GTD Blair, Woodwork Learner. Neil M, Norman Greenwell. All coming in now. Doug Miller would spin around. Mark the gentleman would turn. Susie Swiss would turn. Woodworm Paul, the wood dude. I want to make stuff. Christina Michael Hesseltine and YB Woodshed. I think that is it. Um, Woodwork Learner's got a question. He said, sorry, just one second. Is that wood wet? No, it's dry. It's been sat in my wood store for about three years. Colin, don't even ask. I didn't even get no flowers, did I, mate? No. You didn't. Benjamin's on as well. Hi, Ben. I'm just going back through the chat up the other way now. Oh, William Kenny as well. Um, I'm just going up back through the chat. So, like I say, if I've missed anyone. If anyone asked a question further up the chat, um, if you just put it again at the bottom, that'll be easier. Ooh. That sound very good. Yeah, the tight would be good. It's only in between the centres till I get a... Um, so that big bark's going to come off anyway, so let's pull that off before it comes off and smacks me. So I'm just using a rough and gouge to get this round. Yeah, I think I've got everybody. Doug's put, not the spindle roughing gouge. Yeah. <laughs> so you need to take the corners off, mate. Once you get the corners off, I'll be bringing out the half-inch bowl gouge. Nope. No um, carrots today, I'm afraid. Um, because, one, I didn't order any. And two, I think I've got enough in my freezer at the moment, so...
Right, I think... Uh, Collins put hashtag flowers for Nikki. Let's start that again. <laughs> right, so... Let's get the half-inch bowl gouge on it. See what we can get out of it now. A little bit more speed. Said he's supposed to be editing a video, but he's been distracted. Say again. Brian said he's supposed to be editing a video, but he's been distracted. Oh no! What by Steve's gorgeous hands? Huh. Oops. TF Turner's on as well. Good afternoon. Anthony Milner. Good afternoon. Welcome. Heard that name before. Rex has asked, is there any bug holes in the wood? No, there's not, Rex. No, it's actually bug free this bit. At the minute. So we're nearly round, wound. So just a little bit more to go so we get round. So it's always nice to try on a on a, something that's not perfectly round, just to have a play more than anything. And like I said, at the end of the day, it's a piece of firewood anyway, so if you mess it up, it don't matter. All you've lost is a bit of time, which was all practice for tool control, so. Um, Michelle Higgins is on. Brian well, said he's very distracted today. Um, he's not very motivated. That's his age, yeah. Ace. Steve gets like that. Every weekend he said plans is next weekend, and then it never happens. Does it, mate? No. I'm going to stop planning now. All right. Right, so I'm going to stop there because if not, if I push in that way, I might push the bark off more than what I already have. So, uh... Paul Finley Wood turning at home, son. Hi, Paul. How you doing? Thanks for coming over. Right, so let's have a look at that. See what that's like. So, don't know how good this bit of wood is because we've got a bit. Of... Right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a a uh, tenon on the end here. So I'm going to clean this up a little bit. Just move that around. I'll fan off a little bit. Um, 
Brian was why I said most of the wood is firewood. What I found out is I don't it is doesn't start off with a fixed idea of how it's to be finished. Inevitably that will be decided by the wood itself. Yeah, exactly. Benjamin's not happy. He said someone's um from Facebook Marketplace who's supposed to be collecting something's not turned up and not even messaged to cancel. Oh, we get that. Crazy. All the it? time, all the time. They crazy. They message you and say, Yeah, I'll have it. Can you take it off? You take it off. I'll be around on such a day to pick it up. They never turn up. It absolutely craze me. Mm. And Woodwork Learner said, um, most of the things I turn end up as firewood. <laughs> <laughs> Same here, Andy. Right, so I'm going to put a tenon on the end of the bottom of that. So I'm use a 10 mil parton tool to uh, put a tenon on there. Quite nasty bit on just took that too low. If we get too far into that, let's just measure that. Do you like Turner's work, Scott's on? Scott, how are you doing, bud? So that is 45 mil. No, it should be fine. I so. am just going to pop off very, very quickly, I promise. Oh, Mark said, look, Ben the witch is back. And he didn't mean yeah. me. <laughs> is he calling you a witch, babe? Right, so that's the tenon. We'll just um, get rid of that bit off the end there. We'll turn that down a little bit more, but that shouldn't really affect inside the chuck anyway. So now get some shape on it, really. So 3.8 bowl gouge, get some shape on it. I'm going to bring it so it's around about a uh, half inch off of that. So turn the speed up a little bit. Bit aggressive here, Steve. Camera's still clear. Just refocus the camera in. What a nice clear picture. So what we'll do is we'll zoom that out a little bit now. So you can see that a bit better. Let's say get a bit of shape. And I'm going to try and put a bit of a bit of a curve on this, just so it's got a bit of character. Just have to check on the grand bunnies. Grand bunnies, seriously? Well, they are grand bunnies. Oh, Amy's on as well. Hi, Amy.
Oh, I didn't miss anything. That smells really nice, that. I must say. What? No, Mark, they're not big enough for pie. We're not having bunny pie. They are very cute. Steve was bunny sitting yesterday. Weren't you, mate? I was. Right. Let's just have a look at the shape. Before we get too carried away. They are really cute. Right, so I think we'll take a little bit more of you. <laughs> Chris but Nikki, how did you fall for that guy with a strange mo? <laughs> that was still not that never even got that was ever so fluffy, weren't it, Steve? It was just it never got any thicker. It was just like a slip. Well, like caterpillar on his. When you, I can't remember how old you were when you shaved it off. But um, yeah, it's just like <laughs> it was really funny. You just never, he just never mans up with your moustache, did you, mate? No. <laughs> so. Uh, but yeah, we was only young, weren't we, babe? We was. Only 22 and I was 20. A long time ago. Hmm. But I wouldn't change it. Liar. My garden is getting blunt. Oh, my gouge is getting blunt. Oh, there's oh, a hard right. bit there. I think my gouge is getting blunt. I think I'll just sharpen up for the final pass. I think that's about the shape I want to go for. Something with a bit of contour to it. So I'll just sharpen my gouge. Up. Da, 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 da. Done. Done. Question. Nice piece of silver birch, Steve. Thank you very much, Hugh. Is a nice piece. just come up. This is a nice piece. A little bit of um, tear out in there, but I'm hoping that we can recover that with uh, a nice sharp gouge. And uh, I don't want to go that way because I don't want to push the bark off. Roy, we've actually been together 32 years. I think we may. We yeah. have. He's only young. All that together. 15 when we got together, I think 17 we got engaged, 18 we bought our first house, I was 18 when we got our first house, 20 we got married, and then waited a little while, had the kiddies. And now our baby's leaving home. Not yet. No. Probably, hopefully, September time. Not hopefully September, but... Should be September time. All right. But she's doing the right thing. She's buying a house, so she's not renting. So that's the main <laughs> thing. Pete's put, oh yeah, happy anniversary. A few more years, Nikki. You could become a saint putting up with him. <laughs> oh, thanks, Pete, for that. <laughs> right, so that's as far as I'm going to go with um, the shape and the size. Um, that probably gonna... did, Chris. He said it looks like it might have fallen off. Looks like it fell off his head, doesn't it? <laughs> what are we on about now? Your moustache. Moustache. <laughs> that was so funny, that. When we look back now, don't we? <laughs> yeah. Right, so I'm going to give that a quick sand. I know, Which... Ben. He said you bought your first house at 18. Man, how things We did. We well, did. that was then. You was able to put your deposit on your... 100% mortgage. Um, Mortgage. So... um. My mum just happened to say to us one weekend, well, if you two are serious about each other, you ought to think about buying a house. 
So we did. Like, All right. So we went out, had a look at a few houses, decided to have a new one, and that was it. That weekend. So, yeah. <laughs> they were 18. And then we told her we'd move by in the house. She goes, oh, it's a bit soon, isn't it? <laughs> And then what are you buying a new one for? Because we didn't want to have nothing to do as a young. So, but yeah, our daughter, she's 21, so it's not too bad. Right, let's get through some of this chat. So because of the bit of terror, and I'm going to sand this with 80 grit. <laughs> Why have you said it's cheaper than we divorced, Roy? Benjamin put you, bought your first home at 18, man, how things have changed. Yeah, like I say, our daughter and her boyfriend, they're buying their first house. He's 22 and she's 21. They've been saving hard. So, getting a brand new house in about four months. Yeah, hopefully August, September time. Mm, happy, but also sad to uh, be leaving. But... Oh, I'm happy for them. Yeah. Soon they get on the market, the better. They're not far away. They're only they about have to... to have such a long mortgage, whereas like we only had to have a twenty-five year mortgage. They've got to start off with a forty year mortgage, so they're still going to be in their sixties, you know. But well, things might change, and they might be able to pay a bit more off and stuff. So we're just going to take each year as it comes. I think. Um, we'll turn on very said he's been married fifty-two years. Wow. Yeah, I agree. Dr. Bob's on. Hi, Dr. Bob. <laughs> Me and Nick was at school together. So uh, we've known each we other. down the same street. We've known each other for, I don't know, 40 odd year. Since I was eight. Yeah. Oh, I'm 50 odd year then. You ain't 50, darling. Um, no. You ain't 58, darling. No. <laughs> um, someone mentioned about Pete's internet. Um, and he's doing Terry's live again on Monday. Where's he off to again? He and his legs playing him up. Alright. Dr. Bob's. Good morning from Detroit. Morning. Um, Roy said he thought your tash was animated. <laughs> <laughs> animated. Nasty bit Brian of said I'm not sure. So sure Saint Nick is a good thing. <laughs> door 60's on. Right door. Benjamin says, if that Chuck Buddy business takes off, the next time, this time next year, you'll be millionaires so you can buy your kids' houses for them. Yeah, right. Hey, Steve spends money. No. No chance. Got expensive wife, you're seeing kids. You, that's not us. It's you. You are terrible. You are the worst. How many packages do I get delivered a week? I know, but that's all stuff for the car. Zero. Or... Zero. How many packages do you get delivered a week? About three a day. Yeah, but I, I buy stuff for the car and the workshop and you and the kids. Not me. You don't buy nothing for me. I do. I didn't even what? get a bunch of flowers, babe. I bought you a car. Chris said anything over 40 years, you get a sympathy card. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I didn't get mine this year, though. That was quite funny, weren't it? I was supposed to get one on the way in from work, and I forgot. I always remember. Steve is usually the one that forgets. And I'll go out the n like before I get the next day and go get card and flowers. I've got went happy anniversary. He went. It's yeah, tomorrow. Right. No, I went. Tomorrow. It was tomorrow. I went. It's tomorrow. He says, it's only the nineteenth. I went. It in, mate. It's the twentieth. He went. That in. It's twentieth tomorrow. In it in. But we renewed our wedding vows as well on the twenty-first, so we have double anniversary. I didn't get any flowers for either day. So this, Michelle said this, engage, this um, anniversary stuff is all one sided because the men never get anything that's always the women who get everything Michelle said is the housing market nuts there like it's here houses selling a day here in California for over asking price well where they wanted to live the houses are going so quick because they've done a help to buy so um, they really wanted a new house because they're young. They don't want to be doing stuff. They want to be enjoying the, the 
themselves before they settled down with the family and stuff. So, um, yeah, but this is a little bit further out, I think, than they wanted to be, but no, it's nice. Good thing is, it's a little complex. That's only a little... Um, that's the, the, the builders only put in six houses on the plot, so it's not going to be crammed in. And all around them is green belt land, so nobody can park, uh, build there for the next 20 years. So that's a good thing about it. Mm. Right. Pete's put Terry took his stepladder on holiday so he could get up on the sunbed and didn't bring it home so he can't reach the lake. <laughs> right, so let's get some sand and sealer on there. Will we put and private buy and see. Say again. Get any flowers delivered though, Steve? No, he didn't. You're right. What's that? What we that? You didn't get any flowers delivered. I don't but want flowers. Scott says his missus says the same. Amazon always delivering. Woodwork learner's going to give you a thumbs down because you didn't get me any flowers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, please do, Andy. <laughs> mm. ah, Terry said he's five foot nine. Yeah, right. <laughs> in his heels. Yeah, I can say. <laughs> not in your own shoes, you're not. <laughs> Doug's put hashtag flowers for Nikki. Woodwork learner said, don't believe his answer, Roy. Mark says he's four foot, Terry's four foot two. On a good day. <laughs> Pete said, is Steve going to half build an extension for him? <laughs> <laughs> I did say to the youngest one, well, it might be finished by the time she actually leaves. Not that I can see her going anywhere any time soon, really. Only build half build, back, only half build extensions for myself, um, Pete. Everybody else gets them finished. Right, let's let that dry a little bit. Um, Benjamin said he found a horn in his garden yesterday. Must have been at least 25 millimetres long. He thought it was a bird at first. Must have been big. Hornets are getting more and more popular in the UK. Terry said that was according to the hospital when they measured him the other week. <laughs> right, so let's just re-sand this now. Barry's Wood Creations wants ideas on a new lathe. Barry's Wood Creations, he's got a new lathe. Not Barry's Wood Creations, Wood Turn and by Barry, sorry. So. He said, I'm going to sell his ha my house in Turkey, so I'll treat myself to a new lathe. Any suggestions on a new one? Depends what space you got, mate. So take this up to the grits. So we're going to take this up to 240 grit. You'll get half the chat tell you the boy axe minus, so half the chat the boy record power. Pete said, how big is your workshop? It needs to be a comfortable fit. Yeah, exactly. You need to be able to get around it. Terry said, Axminster. Mark said, Stratus Zebrana. Big Mark. Yeah. Mark would, would he? You know, 10 grand laves. He said, if he gets what he... If I get what I want for the house, I'll make room. <laughs> uh -huh.
if you're a hobbyist, mate, just buy a comfortable size one. They always do what you want to do. Don't need to spend ten grand on a lathe to do exactly the same what a three grand a lathe do. You're paying for the name, nothing else. The main makes you spend on a lathe. If you're not a very good turner, ain't going to improve your turning. Right, so that's standing up to 240 grit. Well, actually, I've done it to 320 because I forgot. So I'm going to give it another coat of sand and sealer. I'll give it a coat of Yorkshire grit. Nice bit of wood, that is very pretty. A little bit of spalting in it. Pretty bit of wood. Let's refocus that in. I'm just going to have a swig of my drink. Actually, I've got a coffee here somewhere. So, is everybody ready for the Jubilee weekend? Yay! More time off work. Oh, you got to do this thing this year, this driving. Purr, it's got to be done this year. What driving? You've got to do with... Um, oh, right, yeah. Okay. With the son-in-law. With the future son-in-law. All right, so Yorkshire Grit Original. Where's Joe to sing? Sing? Is that what she does? Sings? All right, so I'm going to rub it in really well. Get a nice coat over it. Turn the lathe down low, about 400 to 500. Spend a bit of time working this in. This will take us up to about 1,000 grit. Nice and smooth. Ready to take our final finish. Got a little bit of an odd shape to it, so it can be a bit bouncy when we sand down the end there. Oh, Yorkshire grit's a bit soft today. It's a bit warm in here. I'm just going to speed the lathe up a little bit. Good afternoon, Radar. How are you? Lawrence, Good afternoon, Lawrence. Lawrence. Hi, Lawrence. How's your husband, Ruby? I hope he's, I hope he's getting better. Benjamin, put all seriousness, though, Barry, whatever lave you get, just make sure it has a reverse seat and poke fun at Steve. <laughs> Every lave's got reverse nowadays, isn't it? Wouldn't it be nice, got to go, have to buy some veg and wine for dinner, then a couple of hours in the workshop while lamb cooks, I'll watch the rest and catch up. See you later, Hugh. Thanks for coming over, mate. Nice to see you again. Don't forget, next Friday we have, um, no, not next Friday, 
The third, we have Phil Irons on. That'd be good. That'd be interesting. Phil is a, a very um, entertaining character, let's say. But um, full of knowledge. He's written a couple of books. Runs loads of different courses. So, And he's well known for his awesome hollow forms that he does. So it uh, be interesting to hear what he's got to say. All right, so let's just get a bit of towel and buff that off. Let's take it. Oh, that's nice and smooth, actually. Smooth its baby bum, that is. All right, so we want our tissue to come off clean, as always. Then we know we're ready to put our final over it. There you go, nice and clean tissue. That's nice and smooth. So we're going to put our finish over that. We're going to put over it. Let's put chestnut microcrystalline wax over the top of that. Because uh, hopefully we won't get so many fingerprints all over it. And that'll burn really well if we have to chuck it on the fire. So... Ooh. Got a feeling you've got to do this between a Monday and Friday. Really? My wax is all starting to separate. Give that a bit of a stir, I think. Alright, so oh, that's soft. So a little bit of microcrystalline. Work that in. Just like that. So we'll let that flash off a little well, bit. We said we're great grain and colours. Susie said that wood has a lovely pattern. Uh, it is a very pretty bit of wood, isn't it? AGK Woodworks is on. Hi, everyone. Got you on in the background while in the workshop. Good afternoon. Um, Welcome. So we're just going to buff this. Woodwork owner said his lathe's still in the bit of the car. <laughs> You're going to get a lot turned on up there, mate. Uh, Spirit, wind, wood, stone and bones on. Hi, Heather. How you doing? Right, so there you go. Nice bit of wood, that is. I look, really do like that. It's very pretty. So what we're going to do now is we are going to flip that. And oh, I'm going to leave that centre in there. The reason being is when we come to part off the tenon on the end, we can use that to locate. So as you can see, it's not very big. But you don't have to turn great big stuff all the time. I know it's nice to turn big bowls, but you don't have to do them all the time. And that bit on the bottom is affecting my tenon. I didn't think it would, but it is. So I just need to clean a bit of that off. But before I do that, I'm just going to run a drill down there. So I've got my mark. So I'm just going to run a drill down the centre of this, just so we know where our centre is. And I'm just going to get that and take that off. Actually, I could take that off with the lathe. Put the step centre in there rather than... So we'll put that back in there. Put that back on there. We'll just turn that off with the uh, spindle gouge. So we'll get our spindle gouge. We'll just turn that off. Nearly, nearly flew off. Went for a little bit too thick, but there you go. Still got a centre, which is the main thing. So now we can hold that in our chuck. Now 
that's better. Got a nice tight fit now. So now we can turn out the centre. Leave that in because we're going to need that. So this is where we could lose a bit of our bark, but we'll uh, we'll see what happens. So let's put it on that camera. So we're going to start with a 3.8 bowl gouge with some safety glasses. Oh, there they are. And we're going to gradually cut that out. And we're going to try and get the wall as thin as we can get it without it breaking. Um, but we'll see. So here we go. It's a bit higher. The said it wouldn't be you if you didn't drop something. <laughs> That's what you all come over for. See me drop stuff. Brian said, I have a theory. Is it just us wood turners who are excited by inclusions, spalting, bark and other features and Joe Public, just like a pretty grain and smooth services, or am I wrong? Uh, yeah. You do though, you see an inclusion, you go, Oh I do though, don't I? I see things and I go, Oh, I really like that. <laughs> Roy said those cups hold a thousand milligrams. Oh do they? They're bigger than um the normal ones I have there, the normal ones I use only have old 600. Um, Brent said, why not try star bond around the bark edge first? I actually did, Brent. Before I come on the live, I did put super glue all the way around it. Have you got any of them small ones? What's that? Them small pots. What, the drinking cups? Oh, yeah. I want some one for the rabbit food, because that, that's too big, that other one. You have to mark it, then, won't you? Yeah. Um... All right, so. Going to go down as deep as we dare go. Peach shop's run out of dibbers. Oh, no. Roy said, is that a litre? Yeah. Benjamin said he's noticed that um, general public like things to be really glossy. Shiny cells. And you're right, Ben. A lot of people do like shiny stuff. Give yourself a shine. Ow! Ouch! Actually, I will, I will take that out of there. What have you done? Just stab myself. Well, I haven't stabbed myself in the shoulder or elbow because my jacket caught on it. But I would have done if I had a, if I had a jacket on. So what I'm doing is when I'm going in there, I'm trying to keep it in line with the outer edge. And then we obviously got that step, so we need to come in and then go back out again. Obviously, want to try and keep it as uh, equally walled as we can. I mean, what I'm going to do at the bottom, I'm going to do the bottom so the bottom's got a curve in it rather than squaring it off. Oops.
So I'm not going to go too thin till I've cleaned out the bottom. And then what I'll do is I'll sharpen the gouge up so we get a nice, um, a nice smooth cut on the final cut. Whoops. And what we will have to do, we'll have to change to a traditional grind just to clean the bottom out, I think. Matt's wood shop's on. Hi, Matt. How you doing, bud? So we've got a little bit of a hump in the bottom of that. We were right for the other one. That's ballad for two years. So we're just going to take um, another lost a bit of bark off there. So we might have to take the bark off of that. Lost a bit off of there, but we'll see what we can do. So I'm just going to do one more pass on this edge. That gown just getting a little bit, a little bit blunt. Brian's not having a good day. Is he not? No, he says not my day today. The download has failed to load onto my computer. I might just have to get a negative rate scraper in the bottom there and clean the bottom of that up. But I just want to get my depth first. And I think that's about as deep as I'm going to go. I'll just check it with my uh, limited edition depth gauge. Yeah, it's pretty close. I don't want to go through the bottom when I take the tenon off, do I? Right, so let's sharpen the gouge up so we get a nice finish cut on that. end is good traditional grind is good so we'll just leave it like that so what I'm going to try and do I'm going to try and put a bit of this post inside there so that we can hopefully get a little bit better in there Bit high now. Well, he said he got a Jacobs Multicraft handle chuck MC6G41 made in Sheffield today at the boot sale. Barry said he did his sim wall vessel for the Kings Lynn Club challenge this week. We'll upload the video and pictures later. Good man. Make sure you stick it on the uh, club page, Barry. Sneaks wall light is on. Hi, Clive, how you doing? No, tool rest is too high if I put that in there. So, let's just get that as close as we can get it, which is there. That's too close. So, we're now going to try and get this as thin as we can get it. 
So, uh, again, watching down that wall, so we try and follow that wall. See how thin we got it. It's a bit harder when there's a bit of a curve in it because you've got two angles to follow through. Where the one I did on the video was just straight, so you could just get your shape and just follow it through, which was a lot easier. So we just got a bit thicker and that bottom part. We just want to lose that out. So I'm going to go to, to the 10 mil bowl gouge now just so we can get that. Stop that a little bit. Just so we can get a little bit of depth out of that, a little bit of thickness out of that. I'm just going to keep stopping until we get our thickness that we're happy with. So we're up to up to the curve. We're good, but past the curve. Sorry, we're Pete. No carrots today. I was going to peel some potatoes, but I ain't got right doing it yet. Putting the blame for the missing carrots on the rabbits. <laughs> so that's actually I'm not better. Not really keen on carrots, funnily enough. Are they? No. They're just like proper treats. Ah, oh, bye, Terry. You've got to go. Take care, mate. I hope you get your knee sorted soon. T knee. T knee. Not his knee, it's his leg, isn't it? Right, so I could go thinner than that. How brave do I feel is the question. How low do you go? How low do you go? So, it's getting there. We are around about five mil thick. I reckon we can go thinner than that. Sounds thin now. <laughs> Sounds, uh, you can hear it in the noise. No, Blair, don't be silly. Sorry, I was reading something else. What did he say? Go funnel. Mm -hmm. So that Ryan is. Said put a light on and go really thin. 
I can't, Brian, because I don't know where the light is. It's in the back room somewhere, and I can't find it. I looked for it before the live, and I can't find it. But um, she's thin. She's around about three mil. Um, if that was green, I'd, I I would go really really thin. But Brian said could be a side wall escape. No. But that is a uh, that is fairly equal. Other than that little tiny bit there, that is fairly equal all the way through. So I'm just gonna run the ten mil in there. That's better. It's thin now because it flex look. <laughs> do I do one more? Yeah, one more. Let's go for one mm. more. Oh, the final, the last, the famous last words. If I go through this, I'm going to blame Brian. I've just gone through the side. You in? I have. Oh, uh, that's Brian said it would. Dan, dan, dan. There, look. She's thin. Oh, tickety boo. Oh, don't cry. <laughs> blame Brian. Don't cry. Question is, can I go past that and leave it as a feature? What do you reckon? Um. I wonder if I can just gently clean that out without any doing any more damage to it. Susie went, no! He said, I can see through it. <laughs> Dar said, it's flexing. Barry's Wood Creation says, Steve, three millimetres is good. I tried to go thinner and had two fails. Mm -hmm. Brian's got horrified face. Uh, Colin went, no. Benjamin said, Mark's fault. Christoph um. said, try resin. Uh, Woodwork Learner said, that's part of the design, Steve. Yeah, that's what Dara I mean. said, use a negative rake. I've got to just use a negative rake uh, scraper on the inside. Matt said sawdust and CA. CA, I think, I think it's a bit big. I think they're a bit, a lot to show you. I think they're a bit big for CA. And, Brian yeah, went, so. oh, shh. I just fell off my chair. He's there you laughing. go. So we've got one there and one there. Sneaks Warlock said, why does it have to be perfect? It's art. Blair said, it's now a plant to put and you need that hole for the drainage. <laughs> Way to go. That's all built into the design. <laughs> uh, Brian with a boy says super glue it and say it was a crack, Steve. Crystal yeah. said, Can I breathe now? <laughs> I was going thin, that's only about a mill and a half thick. And I think if I'd have carried on Yeah, that that, that bit there is slightly thinner. And obviously we're at flexing. That's what why it's come through there and there. But could I not repair that with milli put? Would oh, that look silly? Depends what colour. Well, I've got white, black, brown, grey. White. White mini put. Because you've got white around the edge, didn't you? Around the top. The bark. Is that white or not? Silver. Silver birch. Ain't got any it needs to be really light. Whatever you do. Um. If I put resin in it. The resin would be too hard that I'd just obliterate when I try and turn it off. Try a bit of milli put. What colour? I'm sweating. What colour? It's a dark brown, isn't it? Yeah, it's terracotta. No, you don't want that. It's going to stand out too much. 
<laughs> put the lathe in reverse and put it back on. So Heather said brown. Susie said black. Dara said brown. Colin said yeah, well, thick star bond. <laughs> very thick star bond. Very, very thick star bond. Brian said you could, but it's a bit of firewood at the end of the day. <laughs> Well, this is true. This is true. It was all about practicing, wasn't it? It was nothing. It was, it was all about having a go. It was not about having a perfect piece of wood. Do you have anything? With, oh, I'll tell you what I have got. I'll, t I'll tell you what I have got. Whether that'll work or not, I don't know, but we'll try it because I've never used them before. So I put some tape on the inside. How this is going to work. I do not know, but we will try. So, get a nice bit of tape on each one of them. Make sure we push it on nice and tight without putting our finger through the wood. So, Hampshire Sheen do some uh, metal powders, which I have. So, what we could do is we could fill those with the metal powders and see how they come out. I've never used them before, but we'll see. GT Blair said so just use filler with your wood chips, that would work. And wood glue. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna make sure I put plenty of tape over that. Woodwork learns to experiment, Steve, note to lose. Exactly, exactly that. Right, so with these, with, where are they in this cupboard? Not that one, Stephen. So, these are the Hampshire Sheen uh, metal powders they do. So, they do copper, brass, aluminium, pure white, which is, uh, and then black, volcanic black. So, I think the brass. Now, to, to um, do these, you use CA glue. So, obviously, Martin sells the glue as well. Like I said, I've never used these, so we'll see what happens. So I'm going to put a little bit in and then put the, the uh, CA glue over the top. Like I said, it's very fine. But we don't want to be, actually, I think the medium might be better because I think... The thin might be too thin. I think I might just run in the actual. I think the medium might be too thin and all. I'll try it. We don't want a um, great deal of glue on it, really. Cocktail stick. GT Blair went, ooh, cool. Let's get a cocktail stick. Just said copper or brass. Yeah, I'm using the uh, the brass one. I'm just going to put another blob on the other part. How this is going to hold up, I'm not sure. But like Brian said. It's a piece of firewood, so it don't matter. So just get a little bit of activator. Just give it a splash. So we'll do the other one. So powder, where have I put the powder? There it is. So glue again. Good thing is with the wax, it shouldn't really uh, stick to the, the wood very well. Pete said white and black are sands stay very hard on your tools. Oh, right. And Brian said exactly the same. <laughs> 
key shavings works well too, but I like your idea. Great learning curve for other wood turners, said Sneaks Wall up. Sneaks Wall up. Thanks, Clive. I always say another 20 years and I'll be good at this game. Only 20 years? Yeah. Well, I'm working on the principle that when I retire, I'll have more time to play. So I'll learn quicker. So we just need to build up a little bit higher. There's a couple of little low spots in there. So we just put another fine coat over them. And then we've just got to gently turn it off without going through it. No pressure. Do, 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 do. And then do exactly the same with this one. Just a little bit of a low spot. Oops. Oh, that's there. Just a little bit of a low spot there. And just in there. So I suppose you could mix these up and then put them in as a paste. But I think the design to be used this way. So there we go. Brian said he's managed to get Phil and more to reload on the computer, so his day's improving. Oh, good man. Pete said, when you retire, Steve, Nicky has a list waiting for you. Oh, yeah, no one wants I ain't to got a list. I've got a roll of wallpaper, mate. I've been writing it on wallpaper. Just easy. Roll it up. No one surprised um, me, Pete. I'm hoping I retire before I, done. Pete. You still do the list, you idiot. Yeah, you but do you... what next door do. You just do it as soon as you get home. You won't be here to crack the whip, though. Is it? How long are you going to be? I don't know. Another 10, 15 minutes. All right, I'm going to go and sort this out. Just, the sun's out, and I've got to see if the ground bunnies are all right. All oh, right. The sun's out. Sun's... That might be something to do because of daylight, daytime. I think the sun might be out. Right, so gentle passes with a 10 mil gouge just to try and clean some of that super glue off. I don't want to be taking any wood off. If not, we could end up with the same situation, but lower down. Actually, I think I might use negative rake scraper. Oh, if we ain't careful, we're going to be through there and all. Sand it, I think. I think that might be the safest bet. Bit of 80 grip. Or I could use a house brick, one of the two. If I go for it again, I'm going to throw it in the bin. Oh, we're getting there. Just change my sand and pan, I think. <laughs> I 
Yeah. <laughs> really, Blair? <laughs> Plenty of bit of wood, mate. Good thing is, with the finish on it and the super glue, that'll burn well. Oh, I need I think if I use a hand, oh, no, it's gone through there. It's that thin there. Look, no. It is thin. And where it's flexing, it's going to go through. Again, I think it's gone through that little bit there now. You can see the tape coming through. Look. So I think I'm going to call it. And put it back where it belongs in the fire pile. But if I hadn't gone that extra pass because of Brian, it would have been all right. I could have sanded it by hand, I suppose. That might have been better. But never mind. But anyway, as you can see there, you've got the tape coming through there. So, But the idea was there. I think if I'd have sanded that down by hand, that might have been better rather than the uh, the orbital sander or the inertia sander, should I say. You can see tapes coming through there. Tapes coming through there. Really thin there. But it happens. It happens. <laughs> it's always your fault, Brian. Uh, Norman, the, the metal powders are from uh, Hampshire Sheen. If you go on the uh, wood turner's shop in the UK, if you type in Google the wood turner's shop, wood turner's shop, um, Martin's, Martin and Les's shop will come up and they sell them on there. I don't know. Well, I'm not 100% sure whether, they, whether they've got the brass one at the moment. I was on there the other day and um, I'm not sure whether they had the brass one on there. The actual metal powders work well. It's just... Um, whereas flexed, obviously I sanded that part out as well. Because obviously as you turn it, it's bouncing, isn't it? And it's coming into it and sanding that part as well. But the actual metal powder is how it works. So I think if you had a bit of a crack in a bit, you could actually um, fill it with the metal powders. But it is thin, as you can see, look. It's really thin. Really, really thin. Nothing. Sanding came through the side as well. Sanding came through the side as well, so I'm going to call it. Yeah, when I sanded it. But it happens, it happens. Uh -huh. But like I said, it was only a bit of firewood anyway. Um, but it was worth a try, trying to recover it. But you can see that... It's obviously the, really thin there, isn't it? Yeah, it's really thin. But you can see the, the actual, the actual um, pay, uh, powders have worked really well. It's just that before and after of uh, still really thin, hence gone through it. So anyway, never mind. It's a piece of firewood. Doesn't matter it's about trying it. Like I said at the beginning, if it didn't work, we've had some tool tool control practice, and uh, we know we can. I know I can do it because I made one the other night here. So I know I can do it. But that's a better bit of wood, to be honest. 
this was a bit punky in places because it's been sat on the fire pile for like three years so anyway I'll sit in the corner and cry so there you go you can see how thin it is it's only about a mil thick there is, does Pete do a link for oh he's just uh, he's in we can say Pete should have a link up for his. I know he's put the wood turning shop in. All right, um, Pete, do you want to chuck your link in for your live tomorrow lunchtime, mate. Then Brian's. Brian's got his ready. My God, he's on the ball again this week, isn't he? What's going on with him? Right, so I'm going to come back on camera. Oh no, don't do it. They all say. Exactly that, Chris. It's about having a bit of fun and having a bit of play. And the way I look at it is whether it's a fail or a success. You've had time on the lathe. And the more time you got on the lathe, the better you get. So with that, we'll throw it over our shoulder and get rid of that one. Um, so, yeah, that's it. Thank you. Don't forget, this is for this year's charity. This year's charity, I'm going to tell you what it is now. Um I will launch the new the, the Facebook page. We're going to do it for dementia this year. Uh, the reason being is close to mine and a couple of other people's, uh, a couple of the other guys close to our hearts because we've had family members who have suffered with dementia. So we thought it would be good to try and raise some funds for the uh, dementia um, cause. Hopefully, never know, they might find a cure or even help some of the symptoms. Um, so we're going to revamp the Facebook page and I'm going to try and get it relaunched by the end of this month. Uh, and then we're going to do the auction in November. Uh, the reason being is because obviously with things, what's going on in the economy now with fuel costs and living costs and electric costs all going through the roof. Uh, we all know that times are going to be harsh for people this Christmas. So we thought we'd do it by taking a little bit of pressure off people by doing it in November. So if people do want to buy the things for Christmas, um, number one, they're going to get a chance to get them before Christmas. And number two, um, if they do, then they're going to be able to raise a bit of extra funds or a bit more funds ready for Christmas. So it's not taking away the Christmas funds. That was the reason we was doing it. But a very worthy cause, dementia. Um, yeah, it's a horrible disease. Um, personally going through it, not me going through it yet, but maybe I will one day. Um, but having a relative who went through it, it's a, a, a real horrible, horrible disease. And lucky enough, the person who's actually going through it doesn't know they're going through it because to them, they don't they don't realise, which is a, a God blessing because it's, it's, it is really horrible. When you've got a, a loved one not knowing who you are, repeating themselves over and over again, however many times you tell them, the answer to a question, they, they within 30 seconds or a minute or so, they're then asking you the question again. It's, it rips your heart out. And um, it, I, I, hopefully they can find a cure for it, but you never know. But so we're going to see if we can raise some money to try and help the cause. So uh, a massive thank you to everybody who supported us last year. Um, the, all the sales we get on these maker shirts this year um, will be going to this year's charity. So I'll be going to the B Dementia Charity. And then we'll design a new shirt ready for next year's charity. So uh, um, anybody who's already bought a T-shirt, massive thank you very much. Because all that, I think we've raised at the moment about $80 on T-shirts. I know it doesn't sound a lot of money because we're only making perhaps 3 or $4 on a T-shirt. Um, but the reason we kept it low was because we wanted people who, who are limited uh, funds to be able to afford the T-shirts. Yes, they're not the best quality T-shirts in the world because, again, we kept the quality down a little bit lower to make the price cheaper. Um, but at the end of the day, you're buying the T-shirt to support the cause, not to go meet the Queen in it. So, um, so yeah, it's um, a well-worthy cause. So everybody who has um, already donated or who has already um, bought the T-shirt, sorry, a uh, massive thank you. Um, the, the Where you get your t-shirts from is Tim Teesprings. If, I, I don't know if I can find it on this link. Let me see if I can find it. Um, the link is in the description of this video. So uh, let me just see if I can grab the link quickly to check up. Uh, let's have a look. Maker shirts. Where the hell is that gone? Should be. At the top of my oh here we go this is the this is the link for the
the make oh not all that same this is, should be the link for for the t-shirts for this year copy so if you can or you would like to buy a t-shirt then please pop over and purchase your t-shirt um shipped all over in the world if you're buying them from the us then make sure you click on the us website because if not they'll end up being shipped from the uk and they'll take a long while to come over um, but there is a us and a uk website so you can switch between depending on where you are um so other than that thank you very much um i will be contacting people I know there's a lot of people last year who offered to donate, but we had so many offers last year, we had to refuse some people. So I will be contacting some people who offered last year to donate um, and um, obviously some new people as well. So expect the call. <laughs> so anyway, guys, thank you very much for coming over and watching. I hope you've enjoyed. A bit of fun. Um, I don't know where. Oh, here it is. So nice little pot. Shame we got a bit too thin, bit carried away. If I'd have just left it at that final mm. pass, we'd have been all right. But I went a little bit too thin. But at the end of the day, it's worth trying, isn't it? You don't know until you try. And, um, yeah, it is what it is. So, have a great weekend. I'll see you next uh, Friday. Next yeah, Friday. Like craftsman's come on. Oh, hello, Lewis. How you doing, bud? Um, so, I'll be back next Friday. Don't forget, tomorrow lunchtime we have... Pete for Twisted Trees covering for Temporary Terry. And we also have Brian on tomorrow night. Um, not sure what Brian's doing. Not sure what Pete's doing. But pop over and see. You'll never know until, unless you come over and see. Um, you guys are always welcome everybody's chat. So I may see you there. So anyway, guys, it's goodbye from me. It's goodbye from Nick. Take care. Bye. Anyway, guys, take care. Have a great weekend. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Bye. I'm a bit of the that's all folks.